you said you're getting seeing a lot of spike in you know interest. What is driving that? What changed? Well, the business case of Cloud Foundry is still alive in the sense that if you will have, let's say, a couple of thousand developers and you they used to write applications and pass it on to an operations department, you want to eradicate that uh, division of responsibility and bring teams to a you build it, you run it experience. So the larger the organization is and the more conservative these developers are, it is probable that they are on a path of learning how to do cloud native. So it's not that you have, you know, teams with those technical unicorns all the time. You, you often have just the, you, well, without you know, making this a negative thing, but you know, the, the, the average developer isn't an expert in Kubernetes, for example. And uh, organizations, they, they know very much that the more they can guide their engineers with strong processes on how to get applications into the operations uh, while enabling that local self-service and local autonomy, it makes their transformation like very, 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 very good. Now, there's Cloud Foundry, and Cloud Foundry is the strongest technology in addressing a couple thousand developers with on-demand self-service, multi-tenancy capabilities, integration of data services. There is nothing right now in Kubernetes that does the same. So if you take a, a, an organization that has a strong adoption of Cloud Foundry and sit them in front of Kubernetes, they will not get the same level of operational efficiency. A lot of Kubernetes folks don't want to hear that. And I believe that in the long run, there will be a competition about what is the best application delivery in those multi-cluster environments in Kubernetes. That's why we are also contributing Clutch as one of the technologies to get there. But right now and for the, for the you know, very near future, the Cloud Foundry business case is alive. And if you have a lot of 12-factor compliant apps, Cloud Foundry is the best way to do that. And at large scale, that's a classic Cloud Foundry. Now, we are also invested in making a, an Anynines-based product that uh, ships Corefi in enterprise grade because that allows you to address Kubernetes folks with a native Kubernetes stack with a, at a much lower infrastructure footprint still delivering that CF push experience, you know, utilizing build packs and giving you a full application delivery experience with Kubernetes. And in conjunction with the data service that we provide and Clutch as a, as a framework to integrate arbitrary automation backends, I think that's the success story also for getting from enterprise customers to small and medium businesses in the near future. So that's why I personally believe that Cloud Foundry has a future. It will get its share of that application delivery in the Kubernetes market. The, the reason why the dynamics around Corefi in the, in, you know, in the past was, let's say, maybe a bit falling behind expectations was that the Kubernetes ecosystem wasn't really ready yet to go after the application development experience to the extent that Cloud Foundry did.